Let me show you a few things that might help you out along the way. If you look at this close up on the neck here, I'm getting down to my third from darkest color, right? There's my blacks, there's my darkest, so that's number five, that's number four. And so five is underneath the black, so like in this area, I just, you know, drew this. It didn't matter that it got sloppy when it went under the black. Then I went to the lighter color, and anytime I was under the, the next darker color, I went sloppy, and then when I'm inside of a new area, I went clean, right? I explained all that in the last video. But now you get to this area where you say, well, I'm about to put in color number three, and that encompasses all these areas right here. But then when I get to two, there's a lot of areas of two that are clearly inside, like islands, if you will. So it made more sense for me to go ahead and put in all of three and then come back and put layer two, skin color two, on top. So I'm reversing the orders just because this made more sense. So it's possible that you could end up with skin two underneath three as well. But in my case, on the whole rest of it, it just worked out that all the, the two, the lighter uh, areas worked out over the top. And then I just simply, I couldn't find, as I mentioned earlier, any clear highlights, but I put those in last, used a little bit of artistic license. So that is uh, skin number one here, is just those little highlights that I drew in. Similar situation that you might run into is this um, skin color number three here encompassed this whole entire area right here right it made sense just to draw that whole entire area and I could have left that alone and then came back and put the lips in later but while I was working on it I think it would look kind of funny it would look like his his lips were the you know the skin grew over the top of them so what I decided to do instead was to punch out to, to make a cut out of here for the lips so that while I was working on it I could see the lips and then go back in and add a little bit of color. So the way that I did that, and I'll just show you a little demo on the side here. I'll just make two new layers. So let's say that you're putting in this whole entire area right here. So I'll just make like a little bit of a mock-up of that area. So let's say that represents that area right there. And then let's say that this next area represents the lips. Well, first of all, how do I see the lips if they're covered up with this? So first what I could do is just flip-flop the fill and stroke. So I just have an outline. Then I would be able to see the lips. And then I can go ahead and put the lips in. Now, how do I punch that out of there? To use the Pathfinder, this needs to be on top. So if we flip-flop the fill in the stroke, and let's take this one here, put a different color on it just to make this more obvious. So now what you do is you just select these two shapes, use the Pathfinder binder to punch out the top shape. If you happen to have the situation where it ended up that this shape was behind, then that's easy enough to fit. If they were on different layers, you would just simply take the layer that the lips are on and move it on top of the face part. Um, if they're on the same layer, then what you need to do is select the object that's in the back and move it to the front. So what you'd have to do here to make that easier to do is just simply grab this, flip-flop the fill in the stroke, and then grab this item here, right-click on it, go to Arrange, and bring to front and then we can go ahead and flip flop the fill in the stroke back now select the two items bring out the pathfinder and the pathfinder select this object which is minus front and then now you're you're good to to work again where you can see through to the lips so here's the current state of mr eastwood right now 
Um, but the only thing in the face that I don't care for right now is this area looks very flat. But if you look at the photograph, well, here's a posterized photograph. But even on the regular photograph, this whole area kind of blends in together. So that may give me an opportunity to come back and just make this all the same color as the background. So you get that, uh, that kind of interesting hide and found, if you will, kind of effect where, oh, is, where is he? You know, and then all of a sudden you pick up on the shirt details and your mind fills in the best, uh, the rest. Well, oh, he must have a shoulder and, and so on. So I'll probably end up showing you an example of that before these videos are through. But um, if... I wanted like a totally different background or this was for an advertisement and it required a different background then what I'd probably have to do is come in here take some artistic license and bring in a little bit of like black detail to carry on like the, the wrinkles and such over here so this didn't just appear to be just a flat color now I've moved on and started doing the hair and as I mentioned I would I'm going to stick in grayscale for a while so I started to make new swatches for the hair. Even though they're gray, I need to be able to pick them later when I start adding colors. Because maybe I want to give him bright green hair. We don't know yet. Um, but what I found out is when you add a new swatch, <coughs> it just throws it in the middle. Um, you know, it kind of puts it where it should be in the color spectrum. So to help out on this, I did two things. One, I'm switching to this mode here. Instead of this mode going this way, and another thing that you can do here that's a big help is name the swatches. So either as you're making them, when that little pop-up comes, you can name them. And then even after the fact, you can name them. So I can double-click on this one and call it Skin 5. Get those all named so they're easier to pick. And then in the layers, here's what I have so far as I put that first hair in, hair 3, the, the darkest of the hair color. You know, not, in, not counting black. And then um, you can even see here that I skipped some stuff. Uh, I will put hair two over in this side. It's the darker side, so I definitely won't put hair one over here. But if you look here, oh, let me turn him back on. Um, there is some lighter stuff, but I will just go ahead and put that lighter color on top. In fact, let me just do that so you can see it. I've created a hair two layer, which is above hair three, right? Normally we've been working below. And then what I'm gonna do is turn hair three off and lock it. In fact, I wanna lock everything else here but hair two. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stay within this area here and go ahead and put in some of those light colors. And I may even want to drag a guide out there just to stop me from going too far. So I'll do Command R, bring out the rulers, click in the rulers, and then just drag a guide out to about over here so that I just stay within that area. And you can see I'm not drawing every strand of hair because that's absolutely unnecessary. If you needed that kind of detail, you would use a photograph. So this is supposed to be stylistic. And if you compare this to the scanner darkly, which we're trying to do slightly better than because we're only doing one frame where they had to do hundreds, um, we are putting in a little bit more detail, but just enough to get the idea across. So you'll see here when I do the um, fill these in by going to select, same fill and stroke, flip-flop in the fill and stroke because the stroke was already set to the hair 2 color. And then turn layer 3 back on. You can see that does a pretty good job of just getting enough detail in there for the hair. I was able to put in uh, hair color 3 on the other side using the, the same layer. Then I'll use the same layer for 2. Put in some lighter colors here and then since this is the lightest size, um, I will actually go in and put hair color one, uh, which is pretty true with what's going on here, although there are some lighters here, but again, I'm taking some artistic license. So there's hair number two added, and um, definitely stylized. Uh, I don't like a couple things that are happening here, so I'm probably going to zoom in and, and clean these up a little bit. Um, just maybe grab the, the direct selection tool 
and adjust some of the anchor points here so that they stay inside of this other one. May as well take advantage of the fact that I have some, some overlapping colors here, make it look a little bit better. But this is kind of stuff you'll do. Come in and touch up all over the place, make it look as good as it can look. And then I'm going to go on, and this will be strictly artistic license, and add the um, color one for the hair, which is basically like the equivalent of highlights in the hair. And as you're going through, oh, I, I thought this was a mistake here, but I haven't done the eyebrows yet. But look for any areas where white shines through. In fact, what you may want to do, uh, in fact, you definitely want to do this before you print, is go to the very bottom layer with the image turned off and put a bright color like magenta or red and make sure there's no areas because uh, that show through because otherwise that will show through when uh, you go to print it you'll have the white of the paper okay so I look for what look like the lightest areas in the hair and just uh, you know and I had a little fun with it put some areas in uh, that looks nice now and that it looks like there's a lighter side of the hair and a darker side because we we only have uh, two colors other than black here but we have three colors including a lighter one here now just need to go and use that same palette in my case for the eyebrows because he's a, a graying man uh, in your case you might have a person who has different color uh, that you have to make for the eyebrows so in that case do go ahead go up to the the swatches and create um, eyebrow you know one two and three let me just command semicolon to get rid of that guide and as you can see coming along pretty good um, need to make three colors now for the lips global colors again so that we can select them later and three to five for the shirt 